Do you see where I am? I'm about five feet from that cage. If I slap somebody the wrong way, I might get some blood splash in my eye. We in Las Vegas, Nevada, fight capital of the world. If you a combat sports fan, you better find your ass up in these seats. Because the reality is, you train, you breathe, you fight in the desert. And the desert gives you what? The UFC. <laughs> That's why I braved the heat for the biggest fight week of the year, right in the UFC's hometown, beautiful Las Vegas. A cursed city of glitz and glamour that's been home to the most legendary bouts in combat sports history. And the UFC is the biggest combat sport in the world right now. Allegedly. But while Vegas is certainly the fight capital of the world, is it really the UFC's town? Or will boxing forever hold that title? To find out, I'm going behind the scenes at UFC HQ, talking to the fighters, the fans, and the president, Dana White himself. The kick on it, when you shoot it, is crazy. Because you shot it. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've shot it a lot, yeah. You better be ready. You better come to All Access and keep shooting. Let's go. This is the most candy I think I've ever seen in somebody's yeah, office I, anywhere. So, so I'm a candy freak. I love candy. The reason I put all this out here is so that I don't want it. <laughs> what? That doesn't make yeah, any sense. I, uh, I don't eat. You walk past your obsessions yeah, every day? All day, and I don't eat. Yeah. <laughs> and then right over here is the Muhammad Ali room. Every conference room that's in this building was named after somebody who contributed to combat sports. Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Ronda Rousey, the list goes on and on. How many motherfuckers I gotta knock out to get a room? A lot. So this is, this is the war room. It's probably the shittiest room in the, in the place, but it's the most important room. This is where we spend most of our days, most of our time. Uh, if you look over here, these are all the top 15 fighters in the world in every weight class. And over here are all the fights that are coming up. And we have fights made all the way up to October 15th. This is one of the big ones that people would be dying to know right now. Yeah, I think your boy right here is going to win too. This one, people are dying to I'm know. I'm dying to know, so I'm excited <laughs> I got to know that, honestly. We are in my office right now. Everything here is, is me or represents something that I'm into or I like. This guy over here is a real samurai from the early 1600s. Those were his swords over there. I've always been into all different types of fighting and uh, you know samurais and ninjas and you name it. I'm into all that stuff and I'm obviously into a lot of martial arts weapons. For so long, it's felt like the UFC and Las Vegas were attached to the hip. How did y'all decide on here? Yeah, well, this is where we're from. I mean, me, me and the Fertitta brothers, we're, we're from here. We grew up here together. And, you know, Vegas is the fight capital of the world. It's just been this place, you know, where all the biggest and baddest fights that have ever happened have been here. You know, from Sugar Ray Leonard at, at Caesars and Hagler and Duran and Mike Tyson and, and Holyfield. And I, th I think that this, this place has such a history. And the reason is because Vegas is a, is a destination. There's so many things to do here. Every night there's so much going on. When I leave town and I go to other places, it drives me crazy. I can't wait to get the hell out of there and get back to Vegas. Being the fight capital, especially of this country, especially as Atlantic City veered down and Vegas only went up, how do you see the rise of your sport going up as boxing kind of dipped down? Do you think about that at all in comparison? Well, I, I, I saw it coming in, in, the, in the late uh, 90s and early 2000s. I felt that boxing, the wheels were coming off the bus. So the way that we've run this sport since day one is the absolute best fight the best from day one. Whereas in boxing, they would save these guys for three years, pad their record. There's no record padding here. There's no denying, there's no questioning who the best in the world are. You fought your way through a gauntlet of badass dudes or women. All right, so we heard from the big boss, but now I wanna hear from the man who sold the UFC to the rest of the world. Let's give a big round of applause to Dana the promoter. Click that button for me if you don't mind. If you don't know this weekend, you don't follow the sport at all. Yeah. This card this weekend is stacked top to bottom with ridiculous fights. Have you ever been to a live UFC event? Ever in my life. 
Well, get ready, buddy. This weekend, you, your life's gonna change this weekend after you see your first one. You don't understand until you've actually gone and seen one and been inside and, and, and felt this energy and this buzz. You're not walking out of this thing on Saturday night going, yeah, I don't ever wanna come to one of these again. So thanks for showing me your office, yo. I really appreciate it. Well, this is just part of the office. This is nothing. There, there's, there's so much more for you to see here. Take me around, let me see it. Let's do it. And more candy. Ah, come <laughs> on. He's got, these, he got these Celtic slippers in Don't here. Eat. I just built the spa over here. Nobody's actually seen this yet. You're the first one to ever see this. As I've gotten older, I've become addicted to cold plunging. Do you like cannonball in or do you just no, eat your way no. in? No, no, no. I get in there, I stay as long as I can, which is usually two and a half to three minutes. It's one of the greatest things you can do for yourself. If you, if you want to keep working the way that I work and, and, and as long and as hard as we work and travel and everything else, this stuff almost becomes a necessity. So this is where the fighters work out or what is this? No, no, this is my gym. This is my personal gym. The fighters have their own whole section over here, an entire building called the Performance Institute. Now that I done worked up a sweat, I want to meet up with UFC legend Forrest Griffin to understand what the UFC Performance Institute can really do for a fighter. We help fighters to extend their careers, to train smarter, harder. Basically, we put science behind MMA training. So show me around. Show me some of the stuff that makes this place the best in the world. So this is a force output measurement device. So like mm -hmm. when somebody hits somebody, I want to know how much energy is transferred from me yeah. to you. Or like what's actually happening, right? You kind of adjust it to the height of the athlete, right? Well, right. put it. Well, put it up. We gotta. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Ten. Th okay. Yeah. That's it. nice when I turn in my hip. That's nice. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, throw a punch or two. Crowd therapy. It looks cool. Um, it's cold. You want to get in there? Hell no. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. So you don't want to try any things? How about this? What is this? Tell this me what this is. This is a low level laser light therapy. So it reduces whole body inflammation, helps you recover. You think about a sport like MMA, you're gonna work yeah. out two to three times a day. You need to recover between those sessions. This is what that does. Oh my God, we're all blinded. <laughs> he locked, he locked. He, locked. <laughs> he opened it right in front of me. After you, sirs. All right, so here we are in the, you know, actual kind of recovery room. So cold tub, hot tub. Behind us, we have sun as a steam room. We have a nice ugly trash can there. Mm. So now this is this what you're gonna do, right? I was thinking about doing this. I have yeah. a speedo if you want to borrow my speedo. <laughs> it's like an underwater treadmill. Yep, and then we can turn the jets on. Basically, you're running against the flow of the water. Great workout in 20 minutes with no axial load or like no impact mm -hmm. on your joints, right? Yeah. It don't look like no underwater treadmill, it look like an underwater cheese grater is what it looked like. So that was cool, Forrest Griffin, but Dana White promised me a drink before I get out of here. So y'all know what I'm about to do. The uh, Patriots games and stuff like that I watch in here. Oh, so you, you ain't here alone, just, you know, getting a little tears off in the locker <laughs> No, no tears. All we do is win, brother. There's no <laughs> tears in this room. Imagine being a fucking Knicks fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how about cool that? Out. There you go, my brother. Mm, to fight week. Uh, people aren't supposed to be here because it's hot as every fucking day. And yet, every fighter in the world refuses to go anywhere else that's not Vegas. We're on our way to see Jacob Stitch Duran. Here's the thing about Stitch. At one point in time, he and the UFC were synonymous with each other. These days, it's like he's a ghost. I've been wondering why that is, and who better than that than the man himself? Love Vegas. Boxing capital of the world. The boxing city, not a fight city. Because it is. So many great, great fights that have been here. The UFC is based here, uh, but nobody's ever called it, you know, 
No one has ever said Vegas is the UFC capital of the world. Do you follow the UFC? I haven't seen the UFCs. You know, just a lot of the characters have changed. And during the time I was there, it was the golden era of MMA. I started working with them for UFC number 32 and was with them for 15 years. Fighters were making a lot of money on sponsors and uh, UFC went into the Reebok deal and uh, they took away all the sponsors from everybody. So uh, nobody was happy. You know, everybody's effing Dana, effing F UFC, effing Reebok. And so anyway, I get a call from Bloody Owl, uh, com, John Nash, and he asked if I'd be interested in doing an interview on how the Reebok deal affected the cut, man. It went viral. <laughs> so I got home and sure enough, man, I get a call. And the only thing he says, he goes, because of the interview you did about Reebok, the UFC's not gonna use you no more. And psh, took a shot. Do you miss it? The UFC? Yeah. No, no, not at all. Not for one second. Not at all. I know what I did was right for the sake of the fighters and, and for everybody. You, have you talked to Dana at all in all of these no, years? You I haven't, haven't talked to Dana him. one time? No, I haven't seen him. There was a lot of value in hearing from Stitch. Having an outside perspective on the fight game can be crucial right now, especially as I'm driving back to the UFC for media day. I want to try to find Israel Adesanya, the middleweight champion of the world for the UFC, and see what he's got to say about a few things when it comes to Fight City. What was the fight you watched that made you say that you wanted to be a fighter? UFC 90. Anderson Silva versus Patrick Cote. That was the first pay-per-view I watched live. And I was like, yo, I'm skinny and black too. I can whoop some ass. What are you looking for in your future? Just having fun and whooping ass, that's it. That's what got me to the dance. It's just kicking everyone's ass that they put in front of me or that I, I selected. And I don't just pick up like the little chumps. I pick the toughest guys that no one wants to fight. And I put them in front of me and I break them off. What's it like to fight in the fight capital of the world? Fighting in Las Vegas, it's, it's an experience. It's the energy, the people. It's, it's got significance in combat sports, this place, this land, because of the people that have come before me. Let's see what some other UFC stars got to say about all this. It feels like home. Um, and for me to you know, continuously be able to book fights in Vegas, they're always massive cards. They're always pay-per-views. Shug Mobile Arena, they're actually changing it from T-Mobile to Shug Mobile Arena because I've won and fought there so many times. For me, it's the city of, of like uh, competition, to be stronger, to enjoy a little bit. <laughs> it's the best place, man. Fighting at the MGM Grand, you know all the history of the arena, uh, nothing matches it. Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya, okay, yeah, myself versus Connor, yeah, and yeah. like uh, Mayweather, Pacquiao, everything happened here. Remember, Part of the beauty of Las Vegas is that eventually, the temperature goes down and the lights get brighter. So we start where anybody should for a good night in the town. You gotta talk to your local cab driver. Why do you think people like fighting? I think it's just a mano a mano of it, you know? I'm trying to see who's the best, who's the strongest. Kind of like I don't know, like a mixture of like Vince McMahon and Don King. It's the Friday before the fight, and we here at UFC X, and I'm ready to go. Let's see what the fans got to say. It's like a car show for fighters. What, what I like about UFC is, one, people get punched in the fucking face. These dudes get half naked in the cage and fight on some gladiator shit. Do you think uh, Vegas is a UFC town or a boxing town? I think Vegas is a UFC town, man. Vegas is UFC town, last UFC. Now they have the institute, the PI Institute, which is really great because now they're taking care of all the fighters here. And you know, it's Sin City too, you know? If anybody comes to town short of Canelo, UFC's gonna out, out, outnumber them, outrank them all day long. Are you going to the fight tomorrow by any I'm chance? I'm going to the fight tomorrow, yeah. How, we're asking everybody, how much did you pay for your tickets? My tickets, I think, were like 350. Grand total of 1400. So far in the last year, we spent over $100,000 on the UFC. Do you think it's worth it? It, it? it will be.
In a few hours, this stadium is going to be packed to the brim to see UFC 276 right here in Las Vegas. I mean, now it's an MMA town. It's mixed martial. This is the, this, you know, we would call this the mecca of mixed martial arts. You know what I'm saying? What's your favorite part of being in Las Vegas, yo? My favorite part of being in Vegas is this, the excitement of fight night and then getting the f out of here. I was at Poirier and McGregor last year. That was pretty next level. The whole card was crazy. Mel Gibson gave me <laughs> straight up. It was only me and him during the prelims, and then I walked out of here with that shit. So you tell me what happened. I'm gonna tell you that Mel Gibson gave you my. There it is. I saw his name on a chair down. They separated us. I asked them to separate us. <laughs> As you can imagine, once the fights get started, it's real hard to film around that arena. So we shoved backstage to sneak in a few more interviews. Do you think uh, Vegas uh, is an MMA city or a boxing city? I'm a little biased. So I'm going to say it's an MMA city. I will say that on boxing night, it's a boxing city. Mm -hmm. On MMA night, it's an MMA city. Whether it's MMA or uh, boxing, you will find it here. Right now, this is MMA, this is UFC country here in Vegas. Now the UFC is the show on the scene. Once the main car started, we couldn't film in the arena. So I had to decide, am I about to sit cage side and watch these fights? Or am I about to go sit in the media tent? Y'all know what the f I chose. Is it a UFC or a boxing town? The jury's still out. But from where I'm sitting, it looks like the UFC is here to step. Poof! Okay, let's do some either or. Naruto or Dragon Ball Z? Naruto. Okay. Tams or Whiskey? Ooh, Whiskey. Rampage or Rashad? Ooh! Mm -hmm. Why you gotta do this to me? Mm -hmm. Yeah! I include the, some, some specific ideas from the samurai world to be. Honest, strong, unshakable mind. Mm -hmm. Not just in the cage, not just there and there. Yeah. yeah, you can keep it everywhere. As much as we don't like, you know, you talk about the guy, like his his profile. Who? Uh, the guy. It's who? The, the guy. The, yeah. Who? You know? Call my Yeah. What, what what is that? These are all meteorites. This is dumb shit you buy when you got a lot of money. <laughs> 